We are eagerly waiting to, to see how we are going to respond to the number of questions we had. We are in the process of budgeting and uh, as a committee, we feel that uh, there are so many issues that uh, we needed clarification so that we approach the budget when we all have those issues answered. So I think uh, without wasting time, I'm only going to call upon you to give your presentation so that we can have time to, to respond to them where need be. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, thank you very much. First of all, I want to thank you as a, the leader of this committee and say Happy New Year. We want also to thank this committee for the good working relationship that we have built over time with this committee. We know you have been our ambassadors, especially where we feel there is needed to defend the ministry and even defend the integration agenda. Mr. Chair, we, as a ministry, we got a letter which had addressed issues that requires to respond, and we have prepared uh, some brief which I believe has already been circulated. It should be with the members. It has some attachments. Others are already in the print, but uh, we shall also be guiding you when we refer, when we get to that area of the response. So, Mr. Chair, I know that I also move with my technical team, and they will ably help us to guide on how we can proceed, especially while we are responding. Just like you took a short time on your remark, I believe I will invite our permanent secretary to uh, advise us and uh, guide on how we can proceed in presenting these uh, uh, responses that we have prepared, Mr. Chair. You are welcome. Yes. Mr. Chair. Mm. Chair, we make a presentation together with the principal columnists in coming some of the areas, especially regarding figures. Yes, please. Um, I appreciate the responses. I have seen they are responding to all the questions. But I don't know how possible it is to bring this, to deliver this, and probably for next time. Because why we are here is not just to look for mistakes, but to make sure that your work is complete and done. So if we have time to look at the responses you have given, then we can put our thoughts in it and maybe be able to give another input. But the way we are going to go through it, it's almost like ritualistic. Would that help you think? If questions are presented and the responses are given early, we go through them, then we are able to give. It is a good observation that I think now. No, this is not a counter-critical committee. No question, you know he has been a chair of the counter-critical committee. But this one, what he's saying, he wants to guide him. We, we, we assist also in some of these things, so that we come out with our visa policies. Yeah, I think that is for, for the future. She has, she has guided properly, but I think as of now, you will just bear good the situation so that we can get the responses, then we can maybe have some comments. Yeah, Mr. Chair, we have taken a note. We shall attempt to improve <coughs> so that this can come early enough. Maybe since we have the email address of the clerk, this will even solve the matter quickly. Uh, we are now IT compliance as MPs, and I believe once she receives the copy, she can still send to the iPads of the members, especially in their, uh, their emails. So we shall uh, improve. But uh, going forward, Mr. Chair, this document also is uh, trying to help the members uh, get appraised in how they are going to handle matters that will emerge in the budget. So we still believe that. Uh, 
the, the, your responses will still come even while we interface with you in the next course of action as we shall now be handling matters of the budget. So while we could receive them earlier, but still at this time they will be of help, Mr. Chair. We shall keep improving. Thank you very much. Proceed. Honorable Chair, and go straight to the questions. The first question, Honorable Chair, was about uh, how far the Minister has gone in the process of developing a new strategic plan. Before you can continue. Developing a new strategic plan since the current one is just expiring this financial year. We we have started the process of developing uh, the new strategic development plan. At the moment, we are in the process of uh, undertaking a comprehensive review of the strategic plan. And this will feed into the new plan. We, some of the activities undertaken include participation in the formulation of the pub, public, public sector management sector interventions for the NDP3, whose first year of implementation is also the first year of implementation of our strategic plan. The AKA strategic planning team has been constituted, which is working on the plan, and we carried out some benchmarking with, with, with other MIAKAs so that we can learn lessons and come up with a, a very good plan for the next five years. Uh, we are also undertaking consultations within the ministry. The comprehensive review of the strategic plan, we hope to finalize it by March 2020, and then we embark on the development of our new plan. Then the second question was whether we undertook a mid-term review of our strategic plan. We did not take a review of our strategic plan, and reason being, being that we, our plan was only three years, just a three-year plan a period. So by the time we were supposed to, take, uh, to undertake the review, we had just started implementing, implementing the, the plan, so it was difficult to really review what we had just started implementing. However, as I indicated earlier, we are now undertaking a comprehensive review which will feed into the new one and we hope to end in March 2020. And uh, once it is uh, complete, we shall share the results with the, with the committee. Question three is on the current status of implementation of the national policy on ESC integration, uh, providing achievements and challenges. We have an annex to this uh, document, Annex 3, at the back of the document, this uh, big document, slightly detailed, starts from page 12. Actually, it starts on page 10. That we could give the summary or maybe the members. Some summary can summarize. Through through chair or to request the, the policy analyst to do the small summary on the achievements.
Achievements which have been gestured by Miyaka in the last two years. 
after we have uh, put them under the, diff the different pillars <coughs> and under custom union we have one reduction in the occurrence of non-tariff barriers which has enabled or facilitated trade establishment of the ESC single customs territory which has reduced on the time of clearing goods it has also started the process of task tax harmonization as provided for in Article 83 c of the treaty, harmonization of a total of 1,428 standards with those of the region, and uh, establishment of one-stop border posts. Within the last two years, uh, ELEGU OSB, OSBP was completed and is now operational. We have even the staff there in our RIC, in the Regional Integration Center. <coughs> Uh, under the common market, there's increased market access for Ugandan products, and for the first time, Uganda had a trade surplus with Kenya. Uh, there is also an uh, achievement under the ESC e passport, the ESC tourist visas, bilateral meetings with ESC partner states, which has helped to reduce NTBs. Under the monetary union, we have spearheaded Ugandan's participation in establishing regulatory and policy framework for the ESC Monetary Union. For example, the East African Monetary Institute Bill 2018 was passed by Yala in April 2018, and the bill establishing the East African Statistics Bureau is also under consideration for approval by Yala. Under the Political Federation, we celebrated 20 years of ESC and then coordinated Uganda's participation in launching the process of drafting a constitution for the ESC political confederation as a transitional model to the political federation. Those are uh, some of the achievements in the last two years. And under question five, the challenges that hinder the achievement of Miyaka's mandate in the last two years. We have a number of uh, challenges the biggest one is the budget shortfall, budget constraints, which has uh, affected some of our activities. One is uh, inadequate fleet. We have a very old fleet, which has really affected our mobility to carry out field outreaches, our sensitization programs in the local governments. Actually, out of the 25 vehicles we have, it's only three which are in good running conditions. Then uh, two, inadequate resources to participate in all regional tripartite and uh, other meetings. We are unable to facilitate uh, our staff to engage effectively in these meetings, and yet we are the coordination meeting. We need to really to be up uh, on top of uh, some of these uh, activities. Then inadequate participation by our staff and other MDAs in regional technical and policy meetings. This is just like what I've talked about uh, under Roman II, inadequate facilitation. Limited resources for investing in research to inform policy formulation and strategy for, our, for Uganda around the ES integration agenda. We really need money for, to carry out research so that uh, uh, we inform the policies that, uh, that come up. Then we also pro we have problem with our premises. We have uh, issues with areas. We have issues with the, the building itself, and uh, and also we issues to do with uh, finding land for construction of an office block. And issue number two is the slow pace of MDA's mainstreaming ESC issues into their plans and budgets, despite Miyaka engaging the MDA's on the matter. And this has led to slow implementation of ESC decisions and directives. Third is pr protectionism by some partner states, slowing down the ESC integration process. And these include the reoccurrence of N NTBs, the non-tax barriers, closure of borders, which has really slowed down the integration process. And the last critical one is the variance in the pace of implementation of ESC Council decisions and directives, both at the national level and also at the regional level. We, the implementation is at different levels. Question six is what are the critically unfunded priority areas in Yaka? 
There's a table where we have uh, brought out the, the critical areas, which we I also touched under item number five. One is support to consultative engagements on drafting of the ESC political confederation constitution. There's a funding gap of 2.6 billion. Vehicles for public awareness, field outreaches, we need 3.4 if we are to replace all our vehicles, the 25 or so. Policy research to inform negotiations and policy formulation, 3.1 billion. Rent for office premises, we need an additional 800 million. Rent areas, 580 million. Enhancing public awareness and sensitization of ESC matters, we need an additional 2 billion. Attendance of ESC statutory meetings to articulate and defend country positions, and uh, a gap of 2.5, and then construction of the ESC house, 7.8. So we have a funding gap of 22.9 billion. Question seven is what is the current position of the country's areas to the ESC organs? What is the strategy for the clearance of the same in the medium term? In this financial year, our contributions to the ESC for 2019-20 and arrears to ESC, the provision for this financial year is 47.44 billion. And what has rele been released by December 2019 is 41.686. And uh, what is yet to be released is 5.7. And if all this money is released, we will be able to clear all the arrears all our contributions for this financial year. We won't have any areas that current forward. Question eight, what are the budget provisions for Uganda's contribution to ESC organs and institutions in financial year 2020-2021? Honorable Chair, our provision for contributions for next financial year is 29.9 billion. And with this, we it will be adequate to meet our, our contributions, our obligations. So long as means of finance releases only 5.7, the, the remaining 5.7. Question nine, what is the status for gratuity areas for the former staff of the defunct ESC? Our response is that 39 former ESC Airways employees have so far been paid gratuity, totaling to 2.6 billion shillings. Internal verification of claimants is ongoing to process the pending cases. Question 10. What are the budget provisions for scaling up, sensitization, and awareness creation on ESC issues for next financial year? Next financial year, according to our draft budget estimates, for the provision for scaling up sensitization and awareness creation on ESC issues is the 2.682 billion Uganda shillings. 11, the main objective of PIP program-based budgeting is to link funding to the results they delivered. The ministry should show the link in the proposed allocations under both programs of the ministry and the outcomes outcome indicators provided. Chair, through you, I request the principal plan to help us through the linkage. It's uh, an attachment at the end of the document. NDP3 structured on uh, five objectives, and uh, the objectives are to enhance value addition, keep growth opportunities, strengthen private sector capacity, consolidate, consolidate and strengthening of private sector capacity, increasing productivity, and uh, strength strengthening the role of state involvement. As you are aware, we belong to the public sector management. We belong to public sector management, and uh, public sector management contributes to three programs, 
and uh, as Miaka, we do contribute to towards public sector transformation. Uh, Miaka does this through harmonization of policy development and implementation, and uh, through maximizing Uganda's participation and benefits from uh, the ESC integration. Miaka has uh, two, two programs, and that is uh, regional integration and uh, administration policy and planning, which is a supportive uh, program to the regional integration. Generally, regional integration is our core program. And uh, the, the output under regional integration is uh, uh, enhancing regional integration. And the outcome indicators uh, is one, value of uh, intra ESC trade, the second outcome indicator is uh, uh, the value of Uganda's export to ESC that are uh, accorded preferential treatment. And the third indicator is uh, the number of Ugandans that are employed in other ESC pattern states. Uh, the sub programs under uh, regional integration are four, and that is uh, political affairs economic affair, social affair, and the production and the infrastructure, supported by the finance administration. The outputs expected from regional integration, uh, one is the fostering cooperation with the, the regional economic communities, building capacity of all stakeholders to effectively participate in the ESC agenda, uh, policy-oriented research, uh, coordination of the formulation of ESC political confederation, coordinating mainstreaming of uh, ESC programs across sectors and MDAs, coordinating amendment of national laws with a view of harmonizing them with the ESC legal framework, providing strategic leadership in regional integration, and uh, sensitize sensitization of the public on ES matters and uh, coordinating with the initiation of policies and support. And uh, we have earmarked a budget of 934 million to ensure that all these outputs are achieved. Uh, but also, like I mentioned, there is a supporting uh, program it is under finance and administration where we are here at 46 billion. And uh, this is meant to provide administrative and support services for all regional programs, uh, coordinating the mobilization and remittance of uh, Uganda's uh, annual contribution. So, out of the 46 billion, uh, approximately 30 billion is uh, for ESC contribution. Then, the rest of the 16 billion is uh, to support. Uh, to support these departments to ensure that uh, they can uh, achieve the outputs. So we really expect that with these outputs, we shall be able to contribute towards uh, uh, achieving uh, public sector transformation, which is under public sector management. And if we achieve this, we shall have completed the, the national development plan and the vision project. <coughs> sure, and question 12. The committee wanted to know why Miaka didn't indicate three out outcome indicators, including value of intra ESC trade in the current BFP. Our response is value of intra ESC trade is a regional indicator, and therefore, data for this indicator is collected regionally. That's across all the ESC partner states. And validation of this data takes longer than the period within which we report, as we report quarterly. So theirs takes longer. The indicator was therefore not reflected in the 2020-21 uh, financial year BFP owing to the challenges we experienced during the last period, past period, in the collection of data for this indicator. Challenge. Question 13, 
In its response to the committee last year, the ministry said it would convene <coughs> national implementation committee meetings as one of the strategies to achieve outcomes. What is the status of the strategy? Our response, Honorable Chair, the national implementation committee meetings have been convened and the various implementing MDAs were able to update the status of the common market implementation. The NIC meetings reports have been used to update the region on Uganda's status of implementation and a backbone for the national meetings and regional monitoring group meeting due to take place. We have copies of the reports. Question 14, the committee would like to ascertain the 2019 20 half year performance of the outcome. Chair, through you, I would request the planner to present on this. Please. Uh, thank you, Madam Pierce. Uh, we have uh, three outcome indicators. One is the uh, value of intra ESA trade. Uh, we have not been able to provide a status as of December. As a result of uh, the data is provided by ESC pattern states in their reports to the ESC on the progress of implementation of ESC common market protocol and through the regional monitoring group meetings, which is expected to be convened in March 2020. So that is when we shall be able to get data to uh, get data on the value of intra trade. Uh, in as the, the second output is the uh, <coughs> value of uh, Uganda's exports to the ESC that are according to preferential tariff treatment. Our target is 700 million. Uh, this data is done uh, after every six months. So July to December, we are yet to conduct a NIC meeting where we shall collect and also be able to validate that data. So for now, we are unable to provide that data or status. The third indicator is the number of Ugandans employed in the other pattern states. Our target is uh, 2,500. And uh, under this indicator, this data is uh, provided by the other pattern states. They are reports to ESC uh, under the, 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 the regional monitoring group, which is expected, expected to be completed in March. Uh, what we can provide is uh, those that are employed where uh, here, other East African, other East African that are employed in Uganda. So for those that are employed in uh, the other pattern states, we shall be able to get that information and data when the regional monitoring group meeting is convened in March. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Chair, on question five, the ministry should provide a status update on pension payments to beneficiaries. Chair, <coughs> the total number of pensioners originally on our, on our payroll was 618. When means of public service carried out a validation exercise, 110 knocked off the payroll because uh, they didn't appear and they didn't have they didn't come for validation and the, our strategy on that is that uh, whoever comes up we send them to means of public service for validation and uh, some of them had mismatching information on their IDs national IDs and those ones we have been sending them to NIRA and once they are validated they are put back on the payroll. Uh, as at 31st December 2019, 508, we had 508 on the payroll by that time, and out of the 508, 
450 pensioners have been paid. And uh, out of uh, the 600, yeah. out of the 508, the 58 have not been paid because they lack life certificates, which is a requirement, and we have also registered some cases of death. In regard to the life certificates, uh, the team, the Miyaka team, has embarked on uh, trying to access these pensioners. We are calling them, and this, uh, last day here, we moved to the field, and uh, in this quarter, we hope to put up also an uh, advert in regard to this. There is an annex. There is annex 16C. These are the ones, the 450 paid. And we also have an annex 16B, those who are put off the payroll. Question uh, 16, 17. Uh, has the ministry conducted an ESC awareness survey to assess public levels of ESC issues and what are the findings? Uh, the ministry has not yet undertaken another ESC awareness since, we, since 2012 due to financial constraints, but we are engaging with UBOS to incorporate this is the ESC awareness survey as part of the Google survey. So that's the strategy we have embarked on. Question 18. Miyaka has the, the past has in the past engaged with development partners like GIZ, USAID, among others, to mobilize resources. What is the progress registered? One, with the help of GIZ, uh, Miyaka. Uh, we, we are implementing a quality management system. That system has been ISO certified. That is ISO 9001-2015. And uh, currently, we are the first ministry which is ISO certified in Uganda, though others have also started. All our staff have been uh, trained on the quality management system, and the uh, departments are implementing the system. GIZ supported Miyaka with the consultant and trainings for the quality management system that have really been instrumental and uh, other certification. We have integrated this system into our operations and it is helping us to really improve our systems. We hope with the time we shall become more efficient and effective. The, secondly, with the help of Trademark East Africa, MIAC has been able to undertake a number of activities, including fully equipping and operationalizing regional integration centers at Busia and Elego, which are now fully operational with staff, engaging and sensitizing cross-border traders at both Mutukla and Busia OSBP, and participating in the African Continental Free Trade Area meetings and other bilateral meetings between Uganda and Kenya. Question 19. What are the strategic priority areas that Miyaka would like to address but requires a committee of ESC affairs to undertake strong engagement and advocacy with the means of finance? We have a number of unfunded priorities where we need support. The support on the consultative engagements on drafting of the ESC political confederation constitution. Where the gap was 2.6. Vehicles for public awareness, 3.4. Uh, actually, even currently, the Minister of State has a very old vehicle. <laughs> the, the policy research. <laughs> policy research to inform negotiations and policy formulation, 3.1. Uh, rent for office premises, 800. Our premises are really dilapidated, and uh, we are losing records because once it rains, some of the offices, including, including the record center, gets flooded, and uh, most of our records are there. We have areas for it, 580, enhancing public awareness and sensitization, 2 billion, attendance of ESC statutory meetings, 2.5, and uh, if we could have a house, 7.8. So we have a funding gap of 22.9 billion. 
Question 20. The Ministry should submit a full status report on the defunct ESC properties. The defunct ESC properties are not under the mandate of MIAKA. We only deal with the current ESC institutions, which are fully funded and managed under the ESC Council of Ministers. And in Uganda, we have the Inter-University Council for East Africa. We have the Civil Aviation Security Oversight Agency, Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, and East African Development Bank. Question 21. How does MIACA coordinate with other economic blocs such as SADAC, COMESA, EU, and others? Uh, under the tripartite arrangement, that is ESC, COMESA, and SADAC, MIACA coordinates with other Ugandan MDS to participate in the process. The tripartite arrangement is an inter. Can the planner help me with this? <laughs> help me with this. Through you, Chair. It's inter regional economic community. Arrangement is inter regional economic community in nature and through the ESC. Partner states engage with the other partner states of other regional economic community. Communities. During Uganda's chairmanship of ESC, ESC was also the chair of the tripartite, and therefore Uganda chaired the tripartite meetings. Two, MIACA is also fully participating in the African continental free trade area activities through the various levels. Chair, that's yes, the last question. Yeah. Thank you very much, Miss and your team. Members, I think you have been taking note, and uh, I don't doubt you are reading and perception. So, if we have responses and questions, we can raise them for clarification. <coughs> Should we move page by page, or yes? We have not talked about Katuna. I remember one time we went there, it was not completed it is, uh, because of funding. I don't know what has happened. They are talking of a record now completed. What about Katuna? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think I'll be able to go through page by page. Allow me just to well, uh, I noted comments just to. No, you have been going through. You'll know where it is. <laughs> I'll just mention the issue. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I appreciate the responses of the ministry, um, but for some reason, unless somebody can help me, I feel we, are, we have not touched what we need to touch. The real rest, like the tangible results is what we expect to hear from the ministry. The ministry is still telling us what they need to do. After you've done that, what have you achieved? I thought that is what the committee would want to hear. You've conducted meetings, you've done since. What, is, what, what has happened? What is different between this year and last year? Because we want to see the progress. I don't know if I'm communicating. I really feel we have not touched there. We are still being very superficial. We are giving what we ought to do, what our plans are. But after implementing those plans, what are the results? That is where we want to base our assessment, so that we know how are we progressing. I think I'm missing out on that, really. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know how the rest feel. And Mr. Chairman, there was a comment that uh, the three-year strategic plan 
uh, could, they could not do a midterm review because it was three years. I, I don't know whether that is valid enough. Because why do we do midterm review? Is to help you see issues that might go wrong. You knew it was a three year strategic plan. Is it, do you do a three year so that you don't do a midterm review? Or was it not necessary? Or the issues that were laid out for that year were so few and so, I don't know, you didn't need a midterm review. The purpose of midterm review, do you think it is irrelevant to you? Because I think whether it is two years or three years, it shows that you are monitoring. It shows that you are following up to see where you are, how far you have gone, and whether you are doing it the way you intended to do it. So I don't know whether that that reason that reason would, would, would suffice. Uh, I want to disagree with the PS. I think you still needed uh, a midterm review, in my own opinion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I am not very. I'm not disorganized this morning, but I am. Um, no, I am good. <laughs> Question number. <laughs> hey, okay. Question number eight. Number nine, awareness creation. I just wanted to know what is your next uh, uh, action. You enumerated the districts you have been to. What was it? Awareness creation on the national policy. About the numbers earlier no, but I'm, I'm making it easy for you. Awareness creation on the national policy of East African integration. What was that? That's what I'm talking about. On my paper here, it is nine. Clearly, I'm reading what I have. So anyway, just look for where that one is. What matters is the content. Yeah, you stipulated, uh, you enumerated the districts you have been to. I would like to know if you intend to go to any other districts and which are those districts. I see here Fort Poto, Chotera, Kabale, Chenjojo, Masindi, Gulu, Iganga, Busia, and Kamuli. Huh? I have succeeded in confusing you. That is question three. What can you help me read this? What is this? Is this not nine? There are two questions. Nine is here. There are two questions. On page fourteen. But that's almost a caption of more or less the same idea. Ah. Now for you what you are all is the internal sensitization of the Okay, so yeah. So may I know when you are coming to Soroti if I must be selfish? Uh, pardon? <laughs> no, I, I, I am a national leader, so I don't want to be concerned just about Soroti. But um, it's important because we have always faced questions. People ask, tend to ask. It, it may seem like it is beyond the level of, it is far below the level of the responsibility of the ministry. But nobody else knows about East Africa except you. So I don't know whether you have partners in the district that should sensitize people locally or something. We need to know that. Um, May I also know how far the, 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 the constitutional drafting has gone? Because I think it started almost four years ago. <laughs> I remember the last time we were in uh, Arusha, the Odokis had started on it. So how far is it? It might help us to know whether we are actually going to confederate or or, or otherwise. Um, not really. Now, when you look at the... This is page... From page four... 
um, how I wish it still goes back to my first observation, the detail, the detail. I don't know if you can, yes, the, the, the planner said some of the information can be obtained from the reports from other partner countries. Uh, there is no way we can go to those partner countries to get those reports except you give them to us. Would like to understand the level because you are complaining that the level of implementation is differing among the member states. Would you like to, to, to state it clearly to us, Burundi, how far are they? And what are the issues? Could you have come to know, or is it your role, or should we ask the other members? Can you give us any information concerning that? The, the differing levels of implementation, what are the issues? Because this has been persistent. Is the, is the council of ministers aware or the presidents, I don't know, something, something like that. Because from the time we started sitting on this committee, these are the same issues. Has anything been done about them or not? Mm, oh, there's something about contributions. Because I hear there are some baby country members, there are some grandchildren, so we would like to know who are the grandchildren members, who are the baby members, and uh, what do we do? Because sometimes it may need to be pushed from another angle. Otherwise, we shall all be bogged down as a, as a community. Don't worry. We shall discuss it at the border. Um, <laughs> The issue of pensioners, the pensioners, you say out of the 58, some, some lack life certificates and then there are those who have died. I think a few people have approached me on this and I think they died. What are you doing about the dead people who have not taken their benefits? And do you have a list of those dead ones and so I can look at my grandfather's if he died, he died, not that if he died, and see if he can still benefit. What do you do anyway? What do you intend to do about those who died? And yet their benefits were outstanding. I think for now, Mr. Chairman, I can pause there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other members? Yes. Thank you, Chair. I hope my neighbor has said a lot. So for me, the, I would like on peg four the cross-border activities. We have always said about it, and I remember our minister was happy that we engaged the Tanzanian, our neighbors, with my constituents. But again, some challenges have come up in this cross-border trade and what. Now it is raised on the issue of cattle. You know now they say they are, people are not uh, away what is happening, but uh, they say the, the cattle markets must be inside 20 kilometers. But when you go to Tanzania, they have markets six kilometers from our border. But uh, our Ugandans have been uh, arrested; they are not allowed. These markets have been crossed. Not about the FMD, but just they say kilometers. The clarification, I think the ministry involved, but the ESA, I think this cross-border, I think we have to improve and know what exactly, so that we can inform our people that these markets must be, but he, Tanzania is operating six kilometers. So then on peg five, uh, my name has said about the payments, but we are it has not been very clear, but some countries don't contribute. The ESC. Remember, we have been in, I happen to be on this committee since I came to Parliament. We have been talking about it. We went sometime to Alusa, other countries are not paying. But uh, Uganda was like, first maybe Kenya, but Rwanda and other countries are, but the benefits. They want the benefits. And uh, even on this, you see the ESC, these spots. I think our committee, though it is good, it was uh, prepared by parliament, but I think to improve on the integration, I think even the committee would have been notified officially 
our committee because if we are in integration, though it was parliamentary games, but the EC as a ministry should also have played a role, a role at our level to hear that you are participating, though it was parliamentary, but Rwanda didn't come, but Tanzania was here, Kenya was here. There are some opportunities which we could be used. Another one is the information on PEC 6, information dissemination. I don't know how you have tried to sensitize people this page, sensitization awareness. Uh, we are happy you have done it, but you have, I have been personally appealing to you that our local government should be also sensitized. We put some money, like me who come from this bed. And you hear the sub county, they are now started planning, making their budgets. At this stage, a small percentage, if you tell a district, my district, as you tell them, that you, if you sensitize, they go. But you, they should be also involved. They say they should, at the local level, they do have at least a small percentage. They are doing, they are, they are participating in the sensitization at that level at the board. But when you go there, you, you come to a sub county like Kakuto, they are totally not a way of talking about this. Apart from if you call them, you talk about, they end there. Uh, you come at the district chapter, you came there, sensitize them, but they end there. But when they are making their own budget, for you, make yours, but for them, they don't allocate any single so that they can go and sensitize. I think for me, I can end there. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I want to thank the Ministry for their, for their report. I I want to say this, that uh, this is not accountability committee. I want to repeat that. It is a policy. It is a policy committee. We, we have to work as partners. And so when you are coming to, <laughs> when you are coming to meet this committee, come as, the, you know, the, we are partners. This committee is a partner with you to develop to defend and so on so you really need to be open now for example um, now when you are going to do your strategy the new one how are you involved involving the committee eh? because you just come out with your new trust strategy but if you had involved, maybe you would have come with a better one if you were involved us in coming out with a new strategy. There are so many issues like trade. He said we cannot ex I mean, export sugar to sugar cane to Kenya. I don't know, Kenya cannot. So many. So how do we absorb such scenarios in, in our strategic plan? Hmm. So these are the things. So I would really, I would really want you to involve, so that we come out with the a real partners. We re can really be partners to come out with the policy and the guideline in this it implementation. And uh, I remember uh, the PS was saying could not the midterm review. Why? Why not? So those are the things which would have, we shouldn't wait for the uh, end of a, uh, a financial year in order to discuss some of these things. You can come out with the, uh, the plans, but reaching in the middle there are roadblocks. You could do, engage us and we see how to push. Uh, you could push, push for the better so that you can work um, and achieve what you really intend to what to 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 achieve if you if you come to uh, page 9 there are this economic block the regional economic block 
if you come to Sadak and so on. Commence. They have really achieved, but East Africa, as a block, our achievement are still. I don't know if you could even be benchmarking with those uh, uh, blocks and cereal. How do they manage? Hmm? Because their achievement is, uh, is so far, so far what, so so far good hmm, compared to what we we have uh, we have achieved. Um, <coughs> again, still page nine. You say the ministry. The defunct Eastern Pro is not under the mandate of the ministry, but uh, we are housing. The, we are just uh, yeah, we are housing them just in this. Uh, but uh, what? Why don't we take advantage? Uh, one time we visited uh, Kisumu, and uh, uh, there's uh, that organization. Maybe chair, you can remind me. They say they have funding, but uh, <laughs> they, 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 no one is trying to tickle on them so that they can come out and fund the activities within the, the East African what, community, community. So this, uh, we have seen here challenges, there are funds, 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 but they say they have the money. They were telling us they have the money, but... Uh, <coughs> How do you, how how do they come in? Maybe maybe, maybe the ministry in Uganda has not engaged them, so they cannot come in and uh, because they, they 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 are there for East Africa matters. Yeah, yeah. Chia, Chia, can you remind me that organization? Yeah. No, not love luck. I am talking. Yeah, Victoria Leia. Yeah. They say they are, they are they are funded they are fully funded they are they have donation I don't know from so many countries here but if you are not engaging them actually they wanted to uh, to make a meeting maybe uh, members of this committee between the three countries so that we can discuss and see how what are the issues and the problem and implementation. They are, they, are, they are willing to, to, to fund us. So we should, do, we should not really talk about funding, funding, when others can what. Mm. They are willing to come out to, to, to see how they to assist us. Uh, again, this, uh, there's a way uh, this, uh, you have the money, but uh, maybe the status. You have the money, but the status of the... the, the, the the status of the the person why you are not paying out because you are is the money there but it is the complete documentation is the one which has a problem so you are so you say the money is there so for paying the gratuity you have 100 percent i think pension yeah and gratuity they have the money but it is only documentation but the money is there it doesn't bring complication. Don't you take back the money in the treasurer as the the, 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 the the end of financial year? Doesn't it bring that complication? Or you take back and then you bring back that? I don't know. I wanted to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the, those are my few what? My, but I do, I only argue to you that we, we, we are partner. This is a session committee. This committee is here to support you and achieve what you really want to support. So we work to work, to work as partner. Thank you, Chairperson. I would do interest to the, the ministry to, to get details because I noticed there's a lot of conservation that is taking place in Kenya. And these conservation efforts are not only through the government, but they are through uh, development funding. Uh, that money 
of conservation. Partly conservation embodies giving people alternative livelihoods, so improving their livelihoods, which is actually needed by the people to uh, improve on their standing in the integration process as far as trade is concerned. Uh, there was something, uh, <coughs> I think it was a policy analyst who mentioned, you can find the page, about there being uh, a gap between the law having more uh, more of the mandate at the center uh, other than in the districts so I was asking what are you doing about it to initiate the, um, the conducive legal framework for the local councils to participate more yeah it is on page 15 uh, one of the challenges, uh, bullet three, role conflict between local governments and government agencies. There are instances where local governments want to take some actions to further the ES integration agenda. <coughs> so what are you doing about this? Uh, like uh, my colleague Honorable Sege had said, uh, it would have been nice for us to have had the list of MDAs and for you to uh, pinpoint to us uh, their, their, their perf to, for you to rank their performances and what are the gaps and how that would inform us how we as a committee would engage also with these MDS. <coughs> I think that was merely an omission. Another omission for the person who made the report was that of uh, 